Sweet soup and welcome back! In this video I will be routing out the neck and hardware slots for the guitar, gluing the layers together and staining. If you have no idea why I made the guitar body or how I got to this point, go and watch the other videos. I have conveniently put them together in a playlist. If you want to see and hear the finished guitar, click the thumbs up and subscribe button right now. I created and printed out templates for all the hardware which I cut out. I transferred the neck location from my spare front layer template onto the plywood. And then the second length. After measuring the width of the neck, I mark the center and transfer it to the wood. The same width was printed onto the template to ensure a nicely centered whammy bar bridge. I subtracted the scale length from the neck length and aligned the template accordingly. To make sure it's straight, I check with my geometric ruler. To choose the right drill bit, I measure the threaded inserts and the sustain block dimensions. Then I drill the holes for the threaded inserts. And pre-drill the ones for the sustain block. The Forstner bit is the reason why pre-drilling is necessary. It always shreds my templates. I took the piece to the scroll saw and marked the cut. As the next step of action, I surprisingly decided to turn on the saw and push the wood into the moving saw blade. After the wood has disappeared, it was time to remove the burrs and fit the hardware. To spare myself the hassle of measuring, I taped off the fretboard and cut the remains. I pulled it off and stuck it onto the body, not mine, the guitar. Remember, measure twice, cut once. I had no way to know if the cutout was straight, so I scrapped the tape and made a new one. This time I drew a center line on it. I also drew a center line onto the body and aligned both of them. Then I went back to the scroll saw. The cutout was filed until the neck holds itself by friction. Using the center line as a guide, I taped the area off and adhered the template with a glue stick. I cut the outlines and removed the template. 
Then I cut it with a scroll saw and filed it. Beginning with the back side I started stacking the layers using metal skewers for alignment. I used the clamp to apply pressure for the double sided tape to stick. I removed the skewer so I don't scratch my workbench. The uneven edges were great while they lasted, but it's time to say goodbye. They will face the wrath of my flush crimbles. After routing there's still some wood left which has to be removed when each layer is separate again. I marked the pickup locations through the cutouts with a scalpel blade. A few grains of wood dust and a bit of grilling later, I could shape the hole for the sustain block, which has to go all the way through the body. Because the router bit is too short to clean the hole, I had to remove the back first. I also needed another template for the spring slot. Before taking measurements, I needed measurements. Only then was I able to take measurements. A few measurements later I decided to just wing it. I also printed out the cover plates for the electronics and tremolo. The template is attached with tape and super glue to prevent any slipping. I used the flush trim bit to burn a hole onto the wooden surface, just to show that the flush trim bit is not made for drilling holes. I used the drill press instead to remove the majority of the material. I spare you from showing the boring footage. The rest was tried out with a chisel and the template was taken off the wood. The cutter turned out to be too small, so I had to cut it again. The potentiometers were measured and pilot holes were drilled all the way through the body, so that I can use a Forstner bit from the other side. Using the same method as shown in the previous video, I routed the recess for the cover plate. Due to the geometry, I had to start in the corner. Then I went ahead and marked the next cut. Since I fucked up by mistake, I'll show you how to fix it. Finish the cut and get a replacement piece. Glue it in place and try again. After the plates fit as intended, the deck was set aside. Using the cutout from the front as a guide, I cleaned the hole for the sustain block. In order to know the next step, I took measurements of it, the pickups and the bridge. The bridge should be the highest point, so the fretboard has to be below it. I set up the router and went to the drill press. The drill bit was zeroed in onto the surface with a piece of cardboard to prevent damage. Now I can drill accurately to the desired depth. I cleaned up the edges with a chisel. Then I was able to take the front off. I think it's looking pretty good, except I'm a right-handed guitarist, so I built a new body, just the way as before with one change. I removed quite some particle boards to remove excess weight. The new body was fit to the front and back layers with a scary long flush trim bit. 
I also cleaned all the cuts with a belt sander. I needed straight holes in the body. Since it doesn't fit under the grill press, I had to move just the hole geometry. This was possible by making holy wood and using it to guide the hand drill. Next I beveled the edges with a chamfer tip and routed out the channels for the cables. This cable couldn't be put in afterwards, so I hot glued it in place. I also removed the burr. I removed the dust and prepared the workplace for the final glue up. Using metal skewers I lined up all the layers. After clamping I could remove all the skewers. After 10 minutes I removed the clamps and added weight instead. Water, wood glue and dry wall filler was mixed together with wood dust and smeared around the particle board ends to fill the major inconsistencies in the material. When dry it files away easily. To fill minor inconsistencies, I applied dry wall filler, sanded it flat and painted it black. I attached the cover plate with double sided tape and sanded back all the excess paint. I sprayed the body with water and removed the raised fibers. I pre-wet the surface before applying the stain. This prevents the wood from absorbing too much color at once. It also makes blending different colors way easier. The blue detail on the front was painted first. The red and blue surfaces followed next. After fully drying I applied a few mud clear coats to keep the stain off my fingers and attached a clothesline to hang the body while drying. Stay tuned to see what I've done to the neck and hardware and for the final assembly. Thanks for watching and goodbye.